<laughs> you are now listening to the Sylvester McNutt the Third podcast. Free your energy. Last week I dropped the first episode of the podcast. Wow, what an amazing response it's been. Uh, the episode was called Timing and Alignment are the Keys to Everything. If you haven't he heard that episode, feel free to scroll back. Get some of that good energy in your life. I believe that alignment and timing are the key to healing, the key to success, the key to happiness. Having the right friends, being at the right job. This week, on this episode, we're going to be reading... From the Care Package book, we will be talking about walking away from pain. Walking away from pain, walking away from pain, walking away from pain. But first, I want to start off with a little story. I know you guys are down with stories. I called my friend the other day. I wanted to see how she was doing. New Year's, new year, new me. New year, new her. I wanted to see how she was doing. I called her. No response. No text back. That's okay. I'm not entitled to anybody's time. I'm not entitled to anybody's energy. Same goes for me. Nobody is entitled to my time. Nobody is entitled to my energy. It is all a choice. It is all a choice, my friends. I called her to see how she was doing. Now, I'll tell you a little something about me. You may be similar. I believe that true connection occurs face to face. I believe that true connection occurs over a phone call. I believe that true connection can occur over FaceTime. I'm an old school type of person. You know, I grew up where you could just go to your friend's house, just knock on the door. Hey, what's up? Call each other, play in the park, basketball, ride bikes, skateboard. You know, that's that's where I come from. I'm a millennial, and then I, I grew up in the time where uh, the cell phones and the technology and all that stuff got, got created and, and given to us in school. So I grew up, you know, Oregon Trail on the computer. I remember when the first MacBook came out. I remember in college, everyone had laptops. They just came out. I mean, the laptops were horrible. <laughs> Two hour battery life. They all crashed. They all, like they were horrible devices, but we had them. I grew up face to face, talking, true connection. So when people when people want to text as their primary method of communication, it doesn't work for me. To me, texting is about relaying information. And I cannot develop and maintain a relationship through text messaging. We have to talk on the phone. We have to see each other face to face via FaceTime, Skype. We have to connect. We have to go to the gym together. We have to go to the movies. We've got to hang out. The way I am, I connect in person. Not over text. Text is boom, 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 quick. Information, boom, 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 quick. I don't have time to play games over text and get to know you. And Like, I actually don't like the text that says, hey, how you doing? Well, what if what if I'm messed up? What am I, am I supposed to say that in text? Oh, I'm not doing great. And then your response is, oh, oh really? Like, if I'm not doing well, I want to tell you that, yo, I'm, I'm not doing well. I don't feel good. My mental health is not where it needs to be. I'm struggling. I'm failing a class. My, my bank account is negative. Like, whatever it is, I don't want to, hey, how you doing? Over text. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm good. Like, who's honest about that? And I'm past the point in my life where I lie to people about how I'm doing. If I'm if I'm going through something, you're gonna know. I'm gonna tell you. I'm not going to struggle alone. I refuse to. <laughs> so she texts me back. 
Now what she texted back had nothing to do with the call. Didn't even acknowledge the call. Now, now, now you guys got to pay attention because the way I tell stories, I'm able to tell a story with my third eye open, meaning I can see all perspectives, meaning I can see how it broke down, where it could have went, where it should have went. I'm telling you this story with my third eye open. I'm going to tell you exactly when I got in my ego. I'm going to tell you exactly when she got in her ego because you need to learn from this. Because part of the pain we experience is because we get in our ego and then we create problems. So I was in my ego because I called and my expectation is I want to call back because that's what's real to me. Me and my ego. That's expectation that I that I placed on her without even realizing it. Her text said, hey. How did you go about getting published? It was something along the lines of that. I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly what it was. Something along the lines of that. It was about publishing a book. She's a poet. She wants to publish a book. She's an artist. She's a great, great friend of mine. I've known this, I've known this girl since 2012 or 2013. We've had so many deep conversations. We've talked about so much. So we have... A great relationship. We don't talk every day. Every now and every couple of months. I felt some type of way when I called her to connect, to genuinely connect. And she texts back three days later asking for professional advice. I felt slighted. I was like, in, in my head, I was like, wow. That's what I am to you. I'm advice. That's what I am to you. This is me and my ego. I pick up my phone. I grab the little voice chat because I didn't want to text back. And I'm like, you know, it's interesting to me how I called you the other day to actually talk to you, to actually build uh, a connection with you and talk. But you're literally responding to me wanting something. I just I just find that interesting. That's me and my ego. She responds. She was like, wow, you're so Hollywood now, Mr. Big Time. She's passive aggressive in her ego. I was like, hey, I'm actually making a master class with my digital marketing Professional. I have a guy on my team is a digital marketing prof professional. DJ Yes on Instagram. Follow him. Wow, you have a master class. You're Hollywood. Yeah, I'm developing a master class. I became a writer uh, in 2012. I went to college and took out student loans to learn how to become a writer and a motivational speaker. That's why I went to college. When I graduated high school, I knew that I wanted to be a writer. I knew I wanted to be an author. So I went to college and learned and took courses, took out debt, started my professional career with a sole intent of eventually becoming an author. 2012, I quit my corporate job, put out my first book to become an author. I've written seven books. It's now 2019. I live solely off of my words, off of my content, off of my creativity, off of my talks. So, yes, I'm going to make a master class because I believe. Now, this is not me and my ego. This is me speaking confidently as a professional. I believe. That I'm a master of creating books that people want to read. I'm a best-selling author. I believe that my intention is to help people. Why not create a class that's going to help people? I don't like the way the publishing industry is set up. So what did I do? I made my own publishing company. What did I do? I self-published all my books through my own company. So I want to teach people how to do that through the master class. Now, I'm not even supposed to be talking to you about this class because we haven't even started it. It may not even come out till next year, but I told her about it because she's my friend. 
Now her response is, she's probably thinking, oh my God, we're friends. I knew him before all of this. So he's going to send me something that he wants me to pay for. Why wouldn't he just tell me? Now she's in her ego. I'm in my ego. Well, I, I can't just tell you. I can't just tell you how to write a book. There's so much to it. We have to talk about the dimensions of the spine. We have to talk about the cover art. We have to talk about the typography. We have to talk about the font. We have to talk about alignment. We have to talk about, are we using quotes? We have to talk about the spacing. Is it is it one? Is it 1.1? 1 .1? .1? Is it 1.2? Table of contents. Are you using resources? Is it just a creative book? Who's your mark? Like, come on. Like, do you want to just put a book out? Or do you want to really... Because when you ask me for help, I want you to have the best. I want you to have the best experience possible. So when you ask me for help, I'm thinking the best. I'm thinking, how can I help you sell more books than I've sold? That's where I'm coming from. I want you to have the best. So she's in her ego, I'm in my ego. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm in my ego. Let me not get this way because she didn't return my call. That's weird. She shouldn't be this way because I told her about a master class. That's weird. So I go to her, uh, I go to my recent calls. Uh, now, my intention here was not to be petty. My intention was just to show her that I called. Because, you know, sometimes it doesn't go through. I go to my recent calls. Uh, it was like four days ago. The call was canceled. She never got the call. <laughs> so here I am thinking, like the call went through, she missed it and just ignored it. When on, in her experience, she never got the call. This is called keeping your third eye open. This is what a lot of people don't do. And this is why a lot of people have pain. See, because I was only thinking about my experience. I wasn't thinking about her experience. It caused me to get in my ego. It caused me to feel as if I was right. It caused me to put an expectation on her. Because she never saw outside of her own experience. She was in her ego. She didn't know how I felt or what I was thinking. She had an expectation on me. So I'm in my ego. She's in her ego. I'm not seeing her perspective. She's not seeing my perspective. What do you think that creates? It creates pain. It creates conflict. It creates misunderstanding. And all we both had to do was pull our ego away and choose because it's a choice. We just had to choose to see each other's perspectives. And you know how you do that? By asking questions and not assuming. And if we would have both asked questions, then in that moment, we both heal each other. We both heal each other in that moment. But instead, we did the opposite of healing each other. We gave each other pain. She gave me passive aggressive and I gave her defensiveness. Now I'm on my podcast talking about it. <laughs> this, is, this is someone I love. This is someone I care about deeply. She'll say the same stuff about me. She loves me and cares about me deeply. But instead of giving her happiness and joy, I gave her pain. Instead of giving me freedom and encouragement, she gave me pain. Is it, I mean, is it major pain? Is it, no, it's not, it's not that serious. It's not that serious, but you get what I'm saying. So here's the deal. I went and looked, the call never went through. I sent her the screenshot and it was so funny because when I went back to the text thread, she said, I apologize if I missed your call. Now, uh-oh, hold on, oh, hold on. Hold on. I got a FaceTime call. Sorry about that. Uh, she says, I apologize that I missed your call. And I said, I apologize because the call never went through. And it was in that moment that we gave each other freedom. She apologized. I apologized. We Gave each other freedom. We gave each other healing by apologizing. Because to come out, to come out of your ego and to apologize to someone is 
one of the greatest things you can do. Because every person hurts per other people. Like we all hurt people, but I don't I don't think we're intentionally hurting people. I don't think I had any ill will to her, towards her, and I I don't think she had any ill will towards me. I think we hurt each other indirectly. Indirectly. So, you know who you are? I'm going to send you the link to this podcast. This is this is uh, not only a further apology, but this is also my explanation so you can understand where I'm coming from. But, you know, if you would answer the phone, <laughs> you would know this. <laughs> I'm just trolling. I'm trolling now. So, I told you guys that story because I just want you to think about it while you're going through things. A lot of the times... A lot of the times you have a misunderstanding with someone because you're coming from ego. You're coming from what you want. You're coming from what you desire. You're coming from your expectation. But if you could just pull back for two seconds, open your third eye, open your third eye, open your third eye. See, because these two eyes see your perspective. Your third eye sees everything. So if you can open your third eye, then you can see everything. Then I can see your perspective. I can see the pain I'm causing you the conflict I may be causing you, and I can heal you in that moment. We need to collectively drive and push each other to open our third eye because it's very easy to see with these two eyes. It's very hard to see with the middle one. Open your third eye, see all perspectives. Understand and have compassion for all perspectives. That's how we heal. That's how we let go of pain. You see all perspectives. If you guys have the care package book, you can pull it out. Go to page uh, 38. Here's the care package book for you guys on the video. I love this book. I wrote it uh, June 4th. I put it out June 4th, 2017. It is a great book on healing care package. I'm going to read a little bit to you today. Uh, this chapter is called... Uh, walking away from pain. Walking away from pain. Uh, we're on page 38. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We're actually on the bottom. We're on page 37. I want to read you a little bit here. Hopefully this heals you. If you're if you're going through anything, I hope these, these words heal you. One of my purposes is I just want people to heal. I want people to feel free. Once you get through the healing, man, you feel so free. On this side of the fence, it's completely different. I feel so empowered. I feel so in my purpose. I feel so inspired. I feel so happy. Most of the time, happiness is not an everyday thing. I feel happy most of the time. I feel good. So I hope these words heal you. Page 37, care package. I feel like care package is helping me heal some different pains. I've had to deal with guilt, shame, and codependency. And to be completely honest, the guilt eats me alive. Man, even just reading this is tough. It's, t it's tough to even just read this. I know people uh, are struggling with this, so let's let's get through this together. My purpose for writing care package to myself is to eliminate all this guilt that I have because I know I do not deserve it. Pain is hard for most people because we define ourselves as pain. We see ourselves as the stories of our past. We lock pain into our minds because we identify with those stories. We judge ourselves in the present moment based on what we experienced before. And we constantly preach to ourselves a level of unworthiness. We take aggressive positions towards our past, cursing out our exes, damning our parents, and holding on to resentment toward an irrelevant person who hurt our feelings years and years ago. All this suffering exists because we lock it into our egos. We lock it into this sense of me, 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 me. My solution for this is to change the narrative. Stop making abuse, pain, and neglect your story. Simply acknowledge that it is a story that you experienced. 
literally changing the the monologue from you know this is what happened to me so here's what i learned from this will change how those stories of the past feel healing is a process that starts occurs and ends in your mind your brain is a tool if you have used this tool incorrectly in the past i hope we can change it moving forward Let's talk deeper about locking pain into your mind and how we can undo it, how we can free the ego from that pain. Page 39 of Care Package, locking pain into your mind. We suffer greatly because we don't understand our minds, the words we use, or how we associate with and deal with pain. The first step toward healing from pain is to become completely aware of how you choose to associate with the pain. Completely aware. The first step towards healing is to become completely aware of how you choose to associate with the pain. Are you telling yourself that this pain is who you are? Or are you willing to say, this is simply something I experienced? For me, the, the pain that I had to disassociate with was abuse. Child abuse from my father. Emotional abuse from my mom. My mother was a narcissistic, emotionally unavailable woman. My father went from loving me deeply as a you know infant, toddler, young kid, to getting a DUI, becoming an alcoholic, and not being able to show any love whatsoever. I had to disassociate from that experience by simply saying, this is simply what occurred, but it doesn't define me. I am worthy of love. I am worthy of being around an emotionally available wo woman. I am worthy of being around men who won't be aggressive and fight me. I am worthy of that. I had to teach myself that. It took years. It was not easy. It took years. I'm not saying any of this is easy. I'm saying it's a choice to choose how we associate with it. Simply altering the words and manipulating the, the, the way you see things can literally change how you associate with the pain. I don't care to identify with my past pain. Now, I don't believe that we should just ignore and, and cover things up. This is what I believe. I believe you see it, you acknowledge it, you're aware of it, but you don't have to identify it as it's a part of who you are. Or because you experience some pain, you're unworthy of love or you're unworthy of happiness. That's what we have to stop doing. Yes, you went through some pain. You went through it. You went through it. Own it. You went through it. Maybe you didn't cause it. Maybe it was someone else who caused it. That's okay. We can have compassion for ourselves. We can give ourselves healing by saying, I am worthy of the healing. I did go through that pain, but I'm worthy of healing from it. I'm worthy of healing from it. I'm worthy of healing from that painful experience. Aren't we all worthy of healing? Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone hurts everyone. So are we sitting here saying that we're not worthy of healing? Is that where we're at in society where we are not worthy of healing? Because last week on the podcast, I said we're all dealing with generational trauma. We're all dealing with generational trauma. I'm a black man in America. I'm not going to talk about racism today, but it exists. Now, when I have my black children. All of the racism that I have experienced, if I do not deal with it, it's possible that I may pass that down to them. It's possible that they may dislike other people in this country because of an experience that I may have had with racism. I don't know if that's fair. I, I, don't, I don't believe that is fair. Now, I'm not naive, just like you aren't. And yes, there's a certain level of I want to protect. But don't you think. Don't you 
Don't you think the key is that we should all be entitled to heal? To have healing spaces? You tell me what you think. Let's continue forward. Page 40 on care package. This is the process to heal from childhood pain. Now, there's lots of writers, lots of people, uh, professionals, psychologists who have many different ideas. This is my idea on how to heal from childhood pain. This idea is what I did personally. I had a lot of childhood pain. And what I'm about to tell you is how I healed from the abuse of my father, from the abuse of my mom. The first thing I had to do was I, I stopped identified, identifying with the pain. The pain is in the past. It is something that happened. It is not something that is happening. And that matters deeply. Because when you're trying to get over pain, if it's still occurring, if the thing that's causing you pain is still in your life, you cannot get over it. You can't get over pain if what's causing you the pain is still in your life. You have to use your good energy to rid yourself of this pain. In the example I gave, I was dealing with abusive parents. When I was 17 years old, I said, no mas, I'm done. I left the house with no plan. I just said, I have to get out. I have to get away. Because I knew I could not heal by being near my oppressors, which were my parents. If you are going through pain, you have to get away from the source of the pain. You will never heal by staying. It just doesn't work that way. I've never seen a story where someone heals by staying near the thing that causes them pain. You have to go. You have to go away. You might have to sleep in your car. You might have to sleep on the floor. I slept on the floor in my aunt's basement because I refused to be around my parents. It was freezing cold in Chicago on the cement floor. I had a heater this big. I had a little nine by nine piece of carpet. I slept on the floor because I wanted to get away from the pain. You gotta go. Walk away from the pain. The second step towards healing from childhood pain. You have to forgive. I forgave my father for beating my ass just because he felt like it. I forgave my mom for not being emotionally available when I had questions about girls. I forget. The very first time I kissed a girl, I went and told my mom I was so happy. I was in seventh grade and I actually didn't kiss a girl. She kissed me. And I went and told my mom, Mom, Leanne kissed me. Leanne kissed me. Oh, my. It was so cool. I didn't know what I was doing, but <laughs> she kissed me. My mom said, boy, you don't have no business kissing girls. You need to worry about school. My mom was emotionally unavailable. A boy needs his mother to be emotionally available to him. It took me almost 15 years to heal from that. To this day, I don't talk to my mom about anything emotional. We have surface, level, high, goodbye, small talk. And I wish we could have deep conversations. I wish I could have a relationship with my mom the way... You know that I see some people have relationships with their mom. I wish I could, but my mother's emotionally unavailable. So what do I look like putting myself in that position to talk to her when she's not there? We talk about the weather and food. We don't talk about the real components. The, re the real, we don't. I forgave her for being the way that she is. I forgave her because I'm... I forgive her because I'm compassionate. I forgive her because I understand where she's coming from. That she went through a lot of pain in her life. 
You will only heal when you can forgive the people who hurt you. And I'm not saying it's easy. It is not easy to forgive my mom for being emotionally unavailable, for never talking to me about sex, for never talking to me about women, for never talking to me when I would be dealing with depression and the most unruly anger. If you knew me in my childhood, you knew me as an angry young man who would fight. You know why young men fight? Because they don't know how to put their emotions into the place of this world in a healthy way. My mom was supposed to be that person for me that I could go talk to about my emotions, about how I felt, but she was not. But I forgive her for that, and that's what freed me from that pain of my childhood. I'm not saying it's going to be easy for you, but you have to forgive on your timetable. The third thing you have to do to heal from pain is learn the psychology about how your childhood traumas have affected you as an adult. You need to do research on fear, abuse, abandonment, whatever it is. For me, I felt abandoned. So from the age of 21 to 25, I researched abandonment. I researched how to deal with emotionally unavailable parents. Self-help, self-teach, self-learn. You have to care about this because your healing is a priority. I guarantee if you're listening to this podcast, I guarantee if you're seeing this video, I guarantee if you read my books, then you care about healing. Healing to you is a priority. If healing to you is a priority because you want to be happy, because you want to get through, because you want to get over the pain you experience, you have to research this stuff. You have to research why was my mother an alcoholic or why, whatever it is, you have to, you have to care. Turn off the Netflix documentaries about freaking whatever donuts, whatever it is you guys are watching. These shows about singing. Research. Understand. Psychology. Oh, that's why she was that way. Now, now I understand. I'm free from it. I, I, I understand. So I'm free from it. Oh my goodness. The last thing you have to do to heal from childhood pain. Learn that living in the present moment will always heal you. Living in the past forces you to align with it, especially if there is pain there. Living in the future forces you to be anxious. Live in the present moment. Man, we, 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 we need to all breathe a little bit here. This, this, this episode has been intense. This episode has been intense. Intense for me. Uh, some of you are probably crying. Intense for you. I need to drink, take a sip of water here. Okay, excuse me. Let's do a little meditation. I didn't do my morning meditation uh, today. I like to meditate in the mornings. I try to meditate every day. So uh, let's do a little guided meditation. If you're following along on the YouTube video, feel free to just close your eyes. If you're following along on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, close your eyes. Obviously, if you're driving, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that <laughs> oh my goodness I, I love the podcast uh, because it's long form and I think and feel in long form and like Facebook and Instagram to me is limiting because it's short form uh, so I love that the podcast and my talks and videos is long form because I, I'm allowed to truly express myself so we're going to do a, a guided meditation right now, and this meditation will be about healing because I feel as if we need to let go of pain. I want you to imagine a place in your very, very near future. Imagine yourself standing in this space. 
It's a space you've never stood in before. You're standing in that space. And you feel good. So you're now smiling because you feel good. And you might laugh. <laughs> because when you feel good, you laugh randomly. And your shoulders, there's no tension in your shoulders. You feel relieved. You have no more back pain. You have no pain in your knees. You have no pain in your hands. You have no pain in your heart. You feel free right now. You feel totally free. It almost feels as if you're floating, as if your energy is floating. And all of a sudden, you feel something leaving you. You feel the pain of yesteryear leaving you. So you can be free, so you can be happy, so you can move forward without the weight of yesteryear. And now, because of this guided meditation, when you think of that pain at some point in the future, you will be reminded that that pain has already left you and that you are already free. And so the next time you think of that pain, just say to yourself, it's okay. It has already left me. The pain from my past is okay. It has already left me. The pain from my past is okay. It has already left me. I am healing now. I am moving forward. I am choosing to forgive. I am choosing to let go. I am a loving, compassionate being. I am choosing to be healed. I am worthy of healing. I am choosing to be happy today. And in this moment today, I am grateful for everything that I have learned. And in this moment today, my commitment is to continue this good energy because I deserve healing and I deserve happiness. I deserve forgiveness. And I feel free. I feel good about today's episode. I think we're going to go ahead and end it right there. This is my second episode of the Free Your Energy Podcast. Hosted by me, Sylvester McNutt III. Best-selling author of seven books. I really hope you guys had a lot of value out of this podcast. Feel free to share on your social networks. Tell your friends. Text. Talk about it. Listen together. Maybe have a wine night with your girls or guys. Or tea if you guys don't drink alcohol. Tea night with your girls, guys, family. In the future, I, my commitment to you is to try my absolute best to not use any profanity. Uh, I, I think it's much cleaner and better that way. Um, you know, we're talking about some some interesting topics here. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you're interested in reading the Care Package book, go to Amazon.com in your country. SylvesterMcNutt.net also has all of my books. There's a couple of bundles on there, a couple of discounts if you want to get multiple books. If you're an ebook kind of person, I have that available. Amazon Kindle, as well as SylvesterMcNutt.net. I am very grateful that you tuned in. Next week, we'll be back. Basically, every podcast will come out Sunday night, so that way you can uh, you can get these good energy vibes on Sunday night or Monday morning on your drive into work, whatever works well for you. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, ideas, feel free to reach out. You can find my information on my website, SylvesterMcNutt.net. This upcoming week, I'm going to start what's called the Free Your Energy Club. Free Your Energy Club is going to be 
ran by me and one of my assistants. It's going to be daily affirmations, uh, ideas, thoughts, videos into a small group, a little small community. Uh, you can only access this. You, you do have to pay to get into the group. You access it via SilverSubmit.net. You make a payment. The group lasts for one month. Uh, we'll, we should be starting up next week. And it's basically, uh, the purpose of it is to give you inspiration daily, words daily, daily reminders to keep you on your purpose, to keep you on your path, to keep you healing, to keep you motivated. Nobody is required to do this. It's just something I'm offering. I'm sending love and compassion to everyone who can hear this. Free your energy. Free your energy. Free it.